Hello, welcome to our first Wichita Postcard Club meeting in the new year. I'm Hal Ottaway, and we're pleased to see so many of our postcard friends here today, and thank you for coming. Our speaker is going to be Morgan Williams. Morgan is an expert on Dad Martin and the W.H. Martin Postcard Company. For many years, he and his family members have combed the newspaper files. They've uh, interviewed old timers and even gone to Washington to the Library of Congress to seek out additional information about this man, Dad Martin, who had his flourishing postcard business in Morgan's hometown of Ottawa, Kansas. We look forward to this presentation that he calls Kansas, King of Folk Art Exaggeration Photography, 1888 to 1940. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Morgan Williams. Thank you very much, Hal. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to participate in this meeting and I've been a member of the Wichita Postcard Club for a long time. Appreciate your friendship and appreciate you telling me about a photographer from my hometown of Ottawa, Kansas. I would like to emphasize today that we're gonna be talking about the folk art, art created in rural America. Folk art uh, brings up images of folk art paintings and folk art pottery and jewelry, costumes, ceramics, textiles, furnitures, carvings. But today we're gonna to talk about folk art photography. The photographers we're talking about, mostly uh, from rural America, they didn't just take pictures of schools and churches and uh, uh, the city hall. They uh, became artists. They created new images. They picked up uh, the whole concept of humor. They picked up the whole concept of uh, what was going on in rural America. and. Uh, they poked fun at each other. And then to do that, they had to create brand new images, which were never seen before, just like somebody created a new painting or a new costume or a new piece of jewelry. The works that we're gonna see today, they belong in the Museum of International Folk Art in Santa Fe Museum and other places, just like any other pieces of folk art. Uh, let's show the first uh, image then. Uh, um, about uh, drought and droughty Kansas. Ooh, great! This image uh, was was this image was created uh, uh, in uh, by by a guy by the name of Warhol. He created the image in uh, uh, 1869. It's called Droughty Kansas. This is a piece of folk art painting. Kansas had a lot of problems in there about being uh, full of grasshoppers and wild Indians and cowboys. And uh, it, was a, it was a place where there wasn't any water and it got called the Great American Desert. And uh, so people were coming to Topeka. This artist was in Topeka. And so he made this painting, Droughty Kansas. It became his most famous piece of work. It's in the Kansas Historical Society. And you can see that the river in the background is flooding. You can see tall ears of corn on the left, guys sitting on a huge watermelon. They're digging uh, sweet potatoes out of the ground with a lever and you got a big <laughs> potato. This became a concept of, uh, of folk art and it became a concept of uh, called exaggeration. This, uh, let's show the black image of this. The next Alan, image. Next one. Yeah, there you go. There, this is, uh, this image became so popular that they, do, they he made it in black and white and it appeared in hundreds of newspapers back on the East Coast. And then within a few years, people were saying this is the best advertisement Kansas ever had for its true agricultural abundance and its prosperity. And it is a masterpiece of uh, folk art it's a masterpiece of uh, the concept of uh, bragging about one's agriculture 
And it's a masterpiece of uh, promoting Kansas. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, here's another one called Droughty Kansas, which was a graphic image. You can see the huge watermelon, you can see the huge hog, and you can see the guy having to climb up on a ladder just to get up on the corn. So it was another concept of uh, let's tell people what Kansas really was. And, and uh, we use the name drought in Kansas. The next image, please. Um, this is one that became very popular. It was by Downing Studio in Topeka. It was it said it was also to be by, uh, by Warhol. And this was the image of grasshoppers attacking the uh, uh, Grangers. And you can see there that the grasshopper got a photograph, a camera. Uh, the grasshoppers are attacking uh, the farmers. It was another concept of humor, concept of creating folk art, and the concept of uh, having fun about what was happening in Kansas. Next. Uh, here's a wonderful uh, trade card by the Moline <coughs> Plow Company. They said American royalty. On the left is king corn, and on the right is queen wheat, and in the middle is the uh, symbol of uh, Moline. So this image became quite popular across the United States and uh, uh, showing king, king corn and queen wheat, and it's a uh, artistic creation of folk art. And we're gonna be moving from paintings and artistics and graphics into photographic uh, folk art. This is the first uh, piece of photographic folk art that I've ever found. It's probably 1865. It's out of uh, uh, Denver, Colorado. It's a CDV. It's an advertisement for a wholesale buyer of agricultural products. You can see the wagon being pulled uh, by a horse and uh, there you got these exaggerated potatoes. They were a wholesale potato dealer as well as agricultural products. So this is probably around 1860, 1865. Uh, and now let's see the backside of it. This is the backside of a CDV from this gallery in uh, Denver, Colorado. And again, it's the first uh, photographic image where they started photograph, photographers started creating these new images not just for trade cards, not just from artists, not just from painters, but from photographers. Um, this is the first one I've ever found from Kansas. This guy's name is Masters. He was a photographer. Let's go back to Masters. Uh, he was a photographer in Illinois, Iowa, and then he moved of all places to Blue Mound, Kansas. And he made this photographer, this picture called uh, Kansas potatoes on wheels. He also did several with corn. And this was, uh, this was uh, around 1889 uh, when he made these. They got quite a bit of distribution in Southeast Kansas. They're very difficult to find. There's very few of them still around. So this is the first Kansas photographer that I found that started using his artistic ability to create these new images uh, about uh, agriculture and abundance in, in Kansas. Next. There was a great photographer by the name of Beck down in Winfield, Kansas. He did this uh, uh, cabinet card also in 1889, uh, showing uh, Mr. Armit, who was a furniture dealer in, in uh, Winfield. And you can see the exaggerated corn and the exaggerated watermelon. And this Mr. Armand, he made this to advertise his uh, furniture store and undertake, undertake a store where they, where they made caskets. Um, this is the only photo that I found that Mr. Beck made, but it was uh, the second uh, uh, major piece of uh, photographic artwork um, made in Kansas in Winfield. Winfield is lucky they have an amazing number of outstanding real photographs, real photo cards from Winfield, one of the best uh, documentations of any city in Kansas. And Beck later made postcards. 
you see the back and next photo is of Mr. Armit. That's the uh, furniture and undertaker in, uh, in Winfield. And you can also see the back of the, where he has his advertisement. Uh, we'll show that uh, that's his uh, advertisement of Mr. Armit for his furniture and undertaking and using uh, the first example we have of using a, an exaggerated image to advertise uh, his, his business. <coughs> Next. Um, in Loveland, Colorado, um, a uh, guy by the name of Swan became a huge potato grower. He was trying to figure out how we're gonna advertise my potato farm. A local newspaper editor came up with the idea of doing this photo and they got a local photographer and they created this cabinet card in 1884 of Mr. Swan carrying this potato. Of course, he published it in the local paper and then it got picked up and then it got distributed all across the United States. And actually the Scientific American newspaper uh, magazine picked this up and said it was real. <laughs> About a month later, they realized that it wasn't real and they pa passed the retraction. But there's articles on the web now that says this is the first exaggerated image uh, ever that went what we call today viral. It became a widely uh, distributed photograph all over the United States and in newspapers and it, it lasted for a long time. This is a cabinet card, which I just recently found uh, uh, out of Loveland, Colorado. Uh, it's just an amazing piece of artwork for 1883-1884. Now we move to Kansas. Uh, there was a photographer in Mankato, Kansas that traveled around Mankato and he made this photo of the downtown area of Burr Oak, Kansas. And in the middle of Burr Oak, he put this uh, ear of corn. And, and this was uh, probably um, 1888, 1890, uh, maybe 1900 when this was made. This copy is in the uh, Kansas Historical Society. <coughs> they also made this into a postcard. If it, I've been looking for this uh, cabinet card for years, never been able to find one. It's very, very rare. And we're trying to show you today the rarest of the rare uh, the hardest to find of the hardest to find. And this is a famous one from Burr Oak, Kansas. Now there was a, there was a photographer in Salina, Kansas about 1888, 1890. He did this photograph, which is a, a cabinet card. He said the way corn grows in Kansas. And as you can see, it's uh, very tall and there's a person climbing up on there. And uh, Salina, Kansas, Saline County was a center of uh, some artists and photographers who did exaggerations. Uh, this is an amazing image. Uh, this is a copy I found not too long ago, original copy. And uh, they made it into a postcard. So let's show the postcard. So this is a postcard that they made out of the, uh, later this postcard came out about 1905, 1906 out of that famous drugstore in Salina that put out, I don't know, 50, 75, 100 uh, different postcards. <coughs> so we're going to the next one. Now we're coming to uh, uh, George Cornish from uh, Arkansas City. George Cornish was a famous photographer. He worked with Pettyman, uh, took over Pettyman Studio, who was came before world famous because of Indians. And George Cornish then put out postcards, we thought started in 1906. And he put out some exaggerations. He only put out five of them, but they became widely distributed. So Cornish created the first exaggerated images uh, in Kansas that became widely distributed. Just recently, uh, Phil McDaniel and I found four cabinet cards that he made in 1902, they got wide coverage. They were covered in the Mail and Breeze Farm Bureau magazine in Topeka, Kansas in 1903. So this is one where there's a house and a huge exaggerated cornfield in the back. 
and it's personal. This cabinet card is personally signed by Cornish, and it's the only one we know of. Next. Here's another cabinet card that Cornish made. Corn in southeastern Kansas. This corn is so tall they have to climb up on ladders in order to cut it. Uh, this is the only copy of this card that we've ever found. And again, we just found in the last few months when we found these and searched the Arkansas City paper that he actually made these in 1902. Next. Cornish also made this one in 1902. This is a cabinet card. And this is the one that in 1907, he made into a postcard. Thousands of these got made, Albert types, and distributed around. Uh, he uh, put Kansas on them, he put Oklahoma on them, and he also put Texas on them. But they got wide distribution in the spring of, uh, of 1907. Another cabinet card, the third one we found, the next one. Here's one with the ear of corn on the railroad car. It's personally signed by Cornish. It's a cabinet card from 1902. So we found these four cards that he made in 1902 of the men climbing the ears of corn, the corn field behind the house, um, the corn on the wagon. And then this is also one that he made into uh, a postcard that got wide distribution. Next. This is the first exaggerated postcard that Cornish made. It's 1906. There's very few of these around, very hard to find. He put that image of the four wheel wagon with the man standing there and he put a corn, a big pile of corn around it. So this is 1906 Albert type, the first uh, exaggeration postcard that Cornish put out. Now this is his famous watermelon. He put out two featuring watermelons and he put out two featuring corn. So he only really made five, but he, uh, they got wide distribution for some reason, far beyond just Ark City and far beyond uh, Kansas. You can find uh, a lot of these on eBay this day, which is indicated how, how many thousands of these he made that got distributed. So these cards were the first ones widely distributed in the Midwest, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Nebraska, Missouri, uh, that had these artistic uh, new photographic folk art images. And it really, when you go on the web, there's people that discount this kind of uh, artistic uh, behavior. I've seen them called freaks. I've Considered them, see them called photographic manipulation, lies, fakes, early Photoshop, photographic trickery, artful frauds. My blood just boils when I see people describe the artistic work of photographers from rural America who are showing folklore, who are showing folk life, who are showing life in rural America. And, uh, if you know Bert Phillips and Joyce, whenever they put these cards on eBay, they call them surrealism. And I used to know a surrealism art dealer in New York who also dealt in Paris, Tim Bond. And Tim Bond collected these. And he said, I take them to Paris and I pass them out as early surrealism. And he said, I think they're great. And, uh, he called them early surrealism and he called them a work of art. He said, it's the art of a craftsman. And I asked him one night in New York in a cafe, what's your definition of surrealism? He said, Morgan, it's that magic place where fantasy and reality touch. <laughs> and that's what I like about these. It's that magic place where fantasy and reality touch. Next. Um, when we're showing the rarest of the rare, uh, the Polar Bear Flower Company, New Era Millie was in Ark City. And uh, 
Cornish also went down to the 101 Ranch, as you know, and he took a lot of photos down there. And he also put some of Pettyman's photos on postcards. He went down to the ranch. He was a favorite of the owners of the ranch. And this postcard shows a huge threshing machine uh, scene on the 101 Ranch down at Ponca City. And he put up in the top Polar Bear Flowers King with their uh, logo and with a copy of the new era milling building in Ark City. These are, uh, there's only four, five, or six of these polar bear cards that's ever been found. Show the next one. This is a salesman for the polar bear flower company. This is a huge sack of polar bear flower that he has over his shoulder. And uh, the new era milling company in Ark City is in the background. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like New Era milling bought these and passed them out. There were a few samples. We found a, we found a few that came from a, a polar bear flower dealer in New Orleans. But all of these polar bear flower ones, there's about seven of them. There's probably five or le less ever known of these uh, exaggerations. So they're the rarest of the rare. Next one. This shows a, a polar bear. Uh, salesman with his uh, salesman kit standing next to the new era building saying polar bear flower is king so it's amazing what uh, cornish did uh, with a local industry there and a local flower to advertise them and uh it's just we're just very lucky that we've there's uh, two or three of them that uh are in uh phil mcdaniel's book that i've never found a copy of and of course, it's always fun to have to continue looking. Next. Uh, this is a Cornish studio in Ark City. He moved it several times, but he made two views of his, uh, of his photo studio in the postcards. Um, they're very hard to find. Next. Um, now we're gonna go to, uh, to uh, William Dad Martin. This is a self-portrait of Dad Martin that he did in the 1930s. Uh, this is now a color painting. It's held in the Franklin County Historical Society. He made this with a group of mirrors and it became a very famous uh, photo and won some awards for him in the 1930s. So this is a picture of William Dad Martin uh, William Martin uh, grew up in Illinois. He came to Ottawa in 1886, 21 years old. And he became acquainted with two Ottawa photographers, Barker and Corwin. And by 1888, 1890, he had his own studio. Uh, and he became a very uh, well-known uh, photographer and a very good photographer. And the Underwood and Underwood Company, the world's largest photographic company in 1910, was created in Ottawa by Bert and Elmer, who grew up in Kansas and started selling door-to-door -door stereo views. And Martin got well acquainted with Bert and uh, Elmer Underwood and took a lot of photos for them and went on trips with them. And uh, so this is a self-portrait of William Martin. Next. Uh, this is a postcard of William Martin. He signed it. This is his calling card. This is his business card. This starts to show how humorous he was. He crossed his eyes. He has his dad's uh, Civil War hat on. He combed his hair funny and he put on a, a band uniform. So this is uh, the start of understanding how creative, how humorous, how practical jokester, how much fun uh, William Martin was. And in 1902, you're gonna see, uh, show the next copy. This is a, uh, this is an ad in the Ottawa University annual, full page ad. You can blow it up. This is a, his calling card. And he said that he's been arrested for hunting, fishing and farming, but he's skilled at photography. If you can enlarge that. Um, there was a famous editor in, in, in uh, Wichita and I met by the name of Henry Allen. Uh, Martin took photographs of the editor of the Wichita Eagle, William Martin, 
And uh, a Chicago paper wrote him once and said they won the picture of William Allen for an article. So Dad Martin sent him this picture and said it was William Allen. When William Allen at the uh, uh, Wichita paper found out about it, of course, he published an immediate re retraction and said he was going to go to Ottawa and raid Ottawa and destroy Martin's studio. They were all great friends. They all played practical jokes on each other. So this article, this picture got posted in a, a Chicago paper saying it was William Allen uh, of uh, the Wichita editor. Next. Here's a full page ad in the Ottawa University campus uh, uh, annual. Take a look at this one. It's got cobwebs all over. Martin's uh, name is upside down. There's about seven of these very creative, artistic, uh, amazing, humorous ads, uh, which was very typical of what Martin would run in the newspaper uh, in 1889, 18, 1900, 1902, uh, to show you how humorous he was. Next. This is a picture of Dad Martin uh, uh, in, the, in the 1920s, 1930s. Next. Uh, this is the only copy of this postcard that's known. This is a postcard of the Martin Postcard Company picnic employees. He had about 30, 35 employees in Ottawa, Kansas. They went on a picnic in 1909 and they published this postcard. And the lady who sent this postcard uh, uh, is pictured here. I found this at a postcard show back in Pennsylvania 20 years ago. And on the right is Dad Martin. The main picture we have of him of what he looked like in 1908, 1909, 1910, when he was running the Martin uh, postcard company. That's a picture of Dad Martin and all of his employees uh, who were making postcards right there in Ottawa, Kansas. Next. Uh, Martin, uh, of course, made uh, pretty good money to making postcards. He made eight million of them. He only did it for four years. Then he went into the highway sign business. And these little highway signs that you see at the gate of a farmer's uh, place that stuck in the ground and you could write on their eggs, 10 cents a dozen or selling potatoes. He created that idea and made a sign company and he made the national sign company. They were all made at Ottawa, Kansas. That started in 1912 and was still going uh, uh, 20 years ago. And this is a, a newspaper article about uh, Martin. And uh, it's called President of Down and Outers Club in 1935. Uh, Martin in the 1930s became a great philanthropist for Ottawa, Kansas. Um, he had four farms. All of the food he raised on the farms was given away. He let people come and cut wood. They could cake half of the wood for themselves, but half of it had to go in the uh, courtyard of the uh, courthouse. So older people and people who can cut wood and there's always a huge pile of wood there in the 1930s. His warehouse was stocked with sacks of cornmeal, sugar, flour, groceries. He brought meat supplies from the slaughtering house. He, uh, he uh, provided the people of Franklin County. In 1932, he bought out a clothing company uh, and he bought $30,000 worth of uh, coats and garments and gave them away in Franklin County. This article says that he gave away 100,000 sacks of corn and 1,400,000 cords, cords of corn. And uh, so everything that he did in the 1930s uh, was to help the citizens of Franklin County with food and with meat and with groceries and word, wood. And this is called that his greatest achievement, he said, was that he became president of the Down and Outers Club. Next. Uh, he was associated, of course, with Underwood and Underwood. This is a stereo view of two ladies in Forest Park in Ottawa, Kansas. Uh, if you turn this uh, stereo view up on the top, you will find 
that all of the millions of Underwood and Underwood stereo views, every one of them says New York, London, Toronto, and Ottawa, Kansas. Just amazing. Since the Underwoods were founded in uh, Ottawa, they always had an office there. And every one of their millions of stereo views, uh, New York, London, Toronto, and Ottawa, Kansas. And I say that's about right for Ottawa, Kansas to be with Toronto, London, and New York. Next. <coughs> this is the only postcard we've ever found that was signed by Dad Martin. <coughs> this is the one that shows President Taft. And in 1908, in October, President Taft came campaigning with his train in Topeka, Kansas. Martin went up there and took photos. If you can blow this up, this shows uh, Martin riding a postcard dealer in Osage City, Kansas, saying this Taft card just uh, just was uh, made. It's three dollars for a hundred of them, or twenty-five dollars for a thousand uh, that he's selling. So this is a card where he wrote a postcard dealer, signed it himself, promoting these cards, and of course. It's interesting that they were $3 a hundred or $25 for a thousand real photo postcards, all made in Ottawa, Kansas. And again, it's the rarest of the rare, the only postcard we've ever find that he personally signed. Next. So this is the first photograph in my collection from Dad Martin. It's 1891. It's a cabinet photograph. It shows the graduating class of Baker University in Baldwin, Kansas, just a few miles away from, uh, from uh, Ottawa uh, in 1891, when he already had his own photographic studio. He had a, one partner for just a year, but if you can blow this up, it, uh, it's an amazing photograph. Baker University, Baldwin, Kansas, class of 91. Uh, Martin is the photographer from Ottawa, Kansas. This is the only one we ever know about, next. I like this one. This is called, a, I call it the Martin's Drummer Boy. This is a Drummer Boy a cabinet card from 1895 uh, that shows you Martin's photography. His photographs were always sharp, always clear, always black and white. <coughs> and his postcards were the best you could do. He didn't, he didn't fail at his photography. His postcards were always very sharp, very clear, uh, totally in focus. Uh, perfect real photo postcards that he made by the millions. Next. <coughs> this is the Ottawa University baseball team, 1894. A cabinet card by uh, Dad Martin showing a baseball team in Ottawa, Kansas, 1894. Next. <coughs> this is the first real fo photo exaggeration Martin never made. Martin made his first ones and distributed them in, in uh, September of 1908. This would be 18 months after Cornish first put his out in the spring of 18, 18, uh, 1907. The first cards by Martin were September 1908. He made four of them that month. And he made this one with Indian corn or dried corn. He wrote Kansas down on the grass. He only made this for about 10 days or 15 days. And then he changed it. He didn't like the dried corn. This is the rarest of the rare. To find one of these dried corn cards is a, is a real plus for a Martin collector. And uh, I, I haven't seen one probably for five years uh, anywhere. So this is the first exaggeration postcard. It shows great artistry. No one's ever figured out how Martin did him. He was so much better than anyone else. It wasn't kind of your typical cut and paste card. It was just an amazing uh, piece of uh, artwork and uh, should be in a folk art photography uh, museum for, for sure. Uh, next, he changed it. In, in 30 days, he changed it to this, where he put a normal layer of corn on there. And uh, this was also uh, 
September of one of his first cards, and he hadn't even given the card a name yet. And you'll find in the back an ad signed for the Wonder Washer Company from Leavenworth, Kansas, Victor Manufacturing. You'll find about six, uh, five or six Martin cards with that sign. Uh, he Maybe he was trying to sell them to that company. But of the six, only one of them was massively produced, and that was the one with apples. You can find it today very easily. The other five we know of, uh, three or four is all, and uh, they're very hard to find. So this is uh, one of the rarest of the rare when it has the Wonder Washer sign in it. I don't know more of three or four or five of these that exist with the Wonder Washer sign. So this was September 1908. Next. Uh, this is also September 1908. He made this one with cabbages. If you look under the cabbages, uh, uh, when he photographed the wagon, there were no cabbages on it and it shows the uh, shadows of the boards, the slacks on the wagon. Martin, after he made it, he looked at this and said, wait a minute, if I took that photograph with the cabbages on there, you wouldn't be able to see the shadows on the boards. So within about uh, 20 days, he changed his photo and covered up the underneath of the wagon. So you can show that one. Next. Here's the, no, go back to there. Look under the wagon. He's uh, blackened it in there and made, made it curved. So it looks like it was taken with the cabbages on there. So this is the second uh, exaggeration postcard that he ever made. The first one was corn, second was cabbages, the third one was uh, with potatoes. All made that first month. Next. Uh, this is a famous photograph he made with this Buick uh, uh, chasing this jackrabbit. Uh, these are uh, very plentiful. He says, when we go after anything, we get it. You look, notice the lasso. The lasso's above the rabbit's head. Martin decided he didn't like that, so he changed it and put the lasso down over the top of his head. The lasso on the top of his head is uh, probably only five of them are known. It's the rarest of the rare. Here's the one that got widely distributed with the lasso coming down over the top of the, uh, the rabbit's head. Next. Uh, in, in October 1908, Taft came to Topeka. Martin went up there and took two photographs of this. Uh, he took two photographs that he made into uh, exaggerated postcards. Uh, this one is called His Trip Bore Fruit. And you can see Taft standing there in the middle of the peaches and the crowd and the exaggerated peaches and the exaggerated apples. Uh, he made two of the two uh, cards. We'll show you the next one in just a minute. This card is the rarest of the rarest of the rarest of the rare. There may be only five copies of these images uh, ever known. Why he did not distribute this one and why he distributed tens of thousands of the other ones, I don't know. But what's interesting is Mr. Strohmeyer, who was the official presidential photographer for Underwood and Underwood, was on the Taft train. Martin made these very quick. He made up a whole lot of them and got them to Mr. Stomeyer on the train and he passed them out to everybody on the presidential train, including President Traft. And he wrote a letter back to Martin, which is in the Ottawa paper, telling him how much of a great fun and stir they had on the Taft train, looking at these two exaggerations uh, made by, uh, by, made by uh, Dad Martin. This is another uh, piece of uh, outstanding artistic uh, photographic uh, folk art. Now let's show the one that they, he made tens of thousands of. This is the one that he made tens of thousands of. Uh, it's called Prosperity. And uh, Taft is on the back of his train. And you can see, uh, you know, uh, onions and, and potatoes and corn and cabbage. This card, you can find it where it says, we welcome Taft in Iowa. This is the way we welcome Taft in Colorado. This is the way we welcome Taft in uh, Wisconsin. 
this is the way we welcome Taft in the state of Washington. So you could get your name on there. And this, this card is the plentiful today. It's a masterpiece of artistry again, of folk art uh, by uh, Dad Martin, who was the master of the masters of uh, folk art, exaggeration, uh, photography. Next. Uh, he made two cards with bulldogs. These are the rarest of the rare. They didn't get distributed for some reason. This card is called, oh my, uh, oh my, Mr. B Mr. Bullfrog. Uh, it's a very nice card. It's got bullfrogs in the pond and there's a guy there behind the bushes shooting at the bullfrogs. This is again, one of the rarest of the rare. We only know of five or six copies of uh, this one in existence. And now show him the second bullfrog one. Angling for bullfrogs. This is another one by Dad Martin. Uh, the second one, bullfrogs, he didn't distribute this one either. Uh, and so it is also uh, among the rarest of the rare if you're looking for uh, the rarest of the rare of uh, Martin uh, real uh, photo postcards. You can see how clear they are, how sharp they are, how perfect the uh, real photographs they are. It's too bad all real photograph photographers who made these cards could not have learned how to make them so sharp and, and uh, clear. Next. Uh, this is the rarest of the rare of all rare Martin postcards. It's called Digging Onions in Kansas. He did not distribute this card. Uh, 30 years ago, I wrote to the grandsons of Elmer and uh, uh, Underwood and lived in the, one of the big Wyoming ranches of the Underwoods and asked him if he had any exaggerations, anything about Martin. He wrote me some letters about what he remembered about the uh, Underwood mansion in New Jersey that had a great rec room with pool. And on the walls of the Underwood mansion in New Jersey were blown up copies of Martin's uh, postcards. This is called Digging Onions. One day I got an envelope from him and then opened it up. And here was this card that I'd never seen before. Was I an excited camper? Yes. And uh, I only have known of one other of these cards that came up. There might be a third one, but this is the rarest of the rare Martin cards, Digging Onions in Kansas. If you see one of these, don't pass it up. Next. Uh, this is another one of the rarest of the rarest of the rarest of the rare Martin cards. It's called Colorado Apples. He never distributed this one. These boxes of apples are from Colorado. He made a trip there in uh, September of 1909. He uh, made this with these ladies there packing the apples, the boxes and all the apples coming down between the rows of the apple trees. It's a very artistic masterpiece by uh, by Martin, and why it's so rare, I don't know. For people who write me and say, hey, do I have any extra rare Martins? The number one card they normally ask me about is they'd like to have a copy of Colorado Apples. Well, uh, I'd like to find some more myself, but this is, uh, again, one of the rarest of the rare. It's amazing that Martin's cards, many of them are made by the tens of thousands. So there's about eight or 10 or 12 of them that were never distributed that become the rarest of the rare. Next. This is a piece of stationery from the North American uh, Postcard Company. Most of you know that they started distributing uh, Martin postcards. Three people from Ottawa, Kansas, uh, six months after Martin got started, created a North American Postcard Company a banker and two businessmen, and they'd made it in New York, in Kansas City, to distribute it. Martin was too busy making the cards. By this time, he was making 5,000 of them a day in Ottawa. They were shipping the emulsion in by the tank car load uh, at the railroad. Uh, show the top of this. This is the only piece of stationery we know about. They say they are the world's largest manufacturer of real photo postcards the North American Postcard Company. A lot of people think they made a fortune. A lot of people think uh, uh, they also tried to create some exaggerations, which were a real flop. 
and the head of this company told Martin in the Ottawa paper a year later, we hired people to make exaggerations. They couldn't do anything compared to Martin, so we quit because they were a real disaster. The problem is uh, one of the uh, members here got into financial trouble. This company was only in business one year uh, from the spring of 1909 to the spring of 1910. They went bankrupt. Martin bought them out, moved all the postcard stocks they had, 60,000 postcards back to Ottawa. And all the postcards then were distributed after Ottawa. But some of the Underwood people knew about this company. They got involved in, and uh, helped them. That's why they were able to distribute Martin cards across the country so fast and so quick uh, was because of the skill of the Underwood and Underwood people who were the largest marketers of photographs in the world at the time. Next. Uh, this is probably the masterpiece of masterpieces by Martin. This is this card is well known and it's it's available today. It's called Peach Canning Cannon, the Peach Canning uh, Time. And take a look at this thing. There's a man standing on a box. There's a big jar that's got peaches in it. That's all exaggerated. They're trying to put an exaggerated peach down in there with that uh, uh, lever system. There's two jars of exaggerated peaches on the left. There's an exaggerated can for the top and, and two exaggerated rubber rings. And then there's over on the top, there's an exaggerated peach in that wagon. And over on the top, right, there's that exaggerated pile of peaches. This is very complicated. It's very sophisticated. It has lots of moving parts that Martin all had to blend together. And again, no one has ever been able to figure out how he was able to do this how he was able to make him look so professionally and so real, so realistic. Uh, and uh, this is one of the masterpieces that ought to be in any uh, photographic museum about uh, uh, this type of photography. Next. Um, this is called The Modern Farmer. It's also very plentiful today, uh, but 20 years ago, the Smithsonian Institution called me and said they'd looked at thousands of photographs and they picked this one as the uh, typical image of what an immigrant from uh, Europe thought about the uh, American farmer. And uh, they asked me if they could use this. And here you got this beautiful car, eggs piled in the back and potato in the back. We know who this family is. They were a family in Ottawa, Kansas. And so this is another masterpiece by Martin that has received quite a, a bit of acclaim and uh, was chosen by the, uh, by, the, uh, uh, by the Smithsonian. And we might say, uh, Hal, uh, I don't know whether Cynthia Rubin is on or not, but 20 years ago, a, a major folk art specialist in the United States, Cynthia, teamed up with me and we did a book called Larger Than Life. And what's interesting is uh, I sent 1,500 exaggerations to New York for them to pick 120 for the book. What's interesting is they didn't, I never told them who these people were. They'd never seen these before. I got the, I got the proof back. They picked 35 Martin cards out of 120, out of 1,500 exaggerations for this book because they thought they were so good. So. One fifth of the exaggerations they picked for this book were all by uh, Dad Martin. Next. Uh, Dad Martin, when he was phasing out of the photography business in 2000, 1910 and 1911, he created five or six images which were only published by the North American, by the Canadian Postcard Company. In, in 1910, the man who ran the Underwood and Underwood office in Toronto for 10 years quit and started his own photograph company called the Canadian Postcard Company. And he put out, he made a deal with Martin and he put out about 45 of the Martin real photo postcards with the same quality, uh, all put on with the Canadian Postcard Company. They did not say Martin. This, this card is called a spilled wheat. 
uh, it shows a, it shows the driver of the wagon trying to call out from under the wagon who collapsed under the weight of the wheat. This is now one of the rarest of the rare, uh, probably only five, six, seven copies of this are known. It was only published uh, in Canada. Next. Uh, this is one of Martin's uh, famous cards. Um, there was this big battle to about moving the uh, capital of o Oklahoma to Oklahoma City in 1910. And there was a big battle. Uh, some people got a hold of Martin and they wanted to try to advertise, let's move it to Oklahoma City. So they talked Martin into creating this card. He says, after 1913, my new address will be Oklahoma City. All of the men in this, this uh, card are personal friends and cohorts of Martin who went fishing and hunting with him. And they show up in a lot of the Martin cards. Of course, people say, wait a minute, what are they moving to Oklahoma City? This is the capital of Kansas and Topeka. Um, this card get, got widely distributed. It's not very hard to, easy to find now though, but uh, the architect who wanted the, the uh, uh, contract to design the building in Oklahoma City, they bought a lot of them and put their name on them. So this is uh, a group of men from Ottawa and a, one of the, major non-agriculture creations by Martin, moving the Oklahoma capital to Oklahoma City, featuring the Kansas capital in Topeka. Uh, this is another one of the cards Martin made, only put out in Canada. Potatoes grow big here. You won't find this card uh, put out in the United States, and they all say at the bottom, uh, the North, the uh, Canadian Postcard Company. The Canadian Postcard Company only put out Martins in, two, in 1910, 1911, 1912. And then when Martin closed down completely, they closed down the Martin cards because I think they were all made in Ottawa. And they started to try to make some of their own with fish. They were never very successful. They were kind of boring. But the Canadian Postcard Company existed clear into the 1950s and they made several hundred exaggeration cards. And then they reproduced all of the Martin cards again in the 1920s, again in the 1930s. And if you're trying to find them, only find the originals that they made in 1910, 11 and 12 are <coughs> clearly identifiable. The ones that they reproduced and their own cards really aren't very good. The only good ones are the ones that they made which were manufactured in Ottawa and designed uh, by Martin with his quality. Next. Um, it's interesting, this is a one with mules that he made in the United States. And take a look at the wagon and the two mules. It's another one of his creations. And then he made one for Canada and he changed it to horses. So take a look at the next one where he got horses uh, instead of mules. Same people, same wagon, same barn, same man in the front. So you'll find one in the United States that says mules, and you'll find this one in uh, Canada with horses. Another great card, great clarity. Next. Uh, Martin went to the San Luis Valley in 1909. He made 60 real photo parse cards of production in, in the San Luis Valley. He made them for an Ottawa company that was selling land in the San Luis Valley. Uh, I'm working with Chuck Harbert in, in Colorado, a, a famous collector and book writer. Uh, we discovered about 60 of these cards made by Martin in the San Luis Valley. He did not distribute them. Most of them, there's only one copy that we know of. Uh, some of them have two copies. Uh, Chuck and I are going to do an article about the Martin cards in San Luis Valley. Uh, this is a famous one where this train has just arrived from Denver of people seeking possibility of buying land in San Luis Valley. They're all sharp like Martin. They all have the Martin handwriting on them. And again, uh, they are the rarest of the rare of the rare. Next. Uh, the of course, Martin was plagiarized uh, hundreds of times. 
the major plagiarizer of Martin Cards was this comedian, Bob Burns, down in Van Buer, Arkansas. I don't know much about him, but he became a famous comedian. He had a theme park down there with Grandpa Snazzy and a bunch of uh, moonshiner Arkansas people. And he took about 40, 45 of the Martin cards. He reproduced all of them as real photos, but it was very, poly very poor quality. Then he stuck his name on them. And uh, it was uh, really a travesty as far as I'm concerned because they, they were poor quality. Uh, they weren't done well. And it was a major plagiarism of the world's best creator of uh, exaggeration cards all by this comedian Bob Burns down in Van Vuur, Arkansas. Sometimes you'll find these on uh, eBay priced just like a very expensive Martin card. And uh, uh, I've written probably a hundred people on eBay to tell them they say these are made by Martin. I said, no, these are not. These, are, these cards were not published by Martin. Uh, they are uh, plagiarism. They are, they are, uh, uh, they should, well, whatever. Uh, just showed you one example of uh, the major plagiarism of Martin cards. Next. This is Dad Martin in the 1930s, standing in Ottawa, uh, uh, when he became a major philanthropist. Next. This shows Dad Martin sitting with some of the people in Franklin County, the down and outers, as it was called in that article that he helped. And again, he had all of the crops from his farms given away. He had all the wood they wanted chopped on his farms. He bought meat, he bought clothing. He did this for years and years in Ottawa. And there was always a huge pile of wood at the courthouse. Anybody could come and get the wood to heat their house. He said he didn't want anybody in Franklin County to be cold or hungry. And uh, how much money he spent, I don't know. But in that one year, he probably spent uh, maybe $7,500,000 of 1930s money buying uh, things for the people of uh, Franklin County, the uh, master of helping the people who were down and out. Next. Uh, we're now going to turn very quickly to a few other photographers. Uh, we couldn't, can't cover all of them from the 1908, 1909, 1910. There was uh, this famous photographer in Hutchinson, Kansas, Bailey. Hutchinson's very lucky. He put out about 150 real photo postcards of Hutchinson. Very interesting views, very collectible. He did eight exaggerations. This is one of them. This is the only copy of this one I've ever seen. He didn't really distribute his exaggerations. This is called On the Farm with exaggerated corn and exaggerated hogs. His most, most famous one shows a flying uh, grasshopper with a little boy in a basket with the American flag. Um, but he made one of the most amazing uh, exaggerations ever, ever made. Let's look at the next one. Here's an exaggeration he made I know of two printed copies. I don't know of any real photocopies. This is called Preparing the Feast. This is the only postcard exaggeration ever made that I know of that featured an African-American family and the stereotype of the meeting possum and this dead possum in the middle. This of course would not be politically correct today, but it's interesting that Martin did two with American uh, with African-Americans showing watermelons. They're very plentiful, very skillful, but this is uh, just an amazing card that Bailey and Hutchinson, Kansas would do this one in uh, 1910, showing this possum preparing the feast. Just an amazing uh, historic creation by a famous photographer in, uh, in uh, in Hutchison, and there's two collectors there, Harmon and two guys that collect Bailey cards. They're just as sharp as they can be. And Hutchison, again, is so lucky that to have that documentation, documentation by Mr. Bailey. Next. Uh, there was a famous photographer, Hal Reed in liberal Kansas. 
He put out 250 real photo postcards of liberal and uh, showing cowboys in the, showing cowboys and uh, um, ranchers and cattle and uh, uh, he was a jeweler, but he made two, over 250, 300 postcards, real photo. They got pretty good distribution. He made eight real exaggerations. He did not distribute them. They're very, very, very rare. I have all eight of them. Uh, here's one called, we're making money now. He's got a food grinder there. There's silver ingots over on the right and they're pouring silver ingots into this food grinder. And out on the other end, they're coming silver dollars made by Hal Reed about 1912 in liberal uh, Kansas. Next. Here's one by Hal Reed in liberal Kansas showing this uh, Ford car <laughs> stuck in a, in a, in a lake in a, when they had a major rain and it shows two ducks pulling the, the car, web foot power uh, for Ford cars made by Hal Reed in 1912 in uh, liberal Kansas. Next. Uh, here's another one by Hal Reed called Burbank's latest eggplant. Here he's got this uh, piece of scrubbery from uh, Western Kansas, eggs coming out of it. This is the third uh, exaggeration he made out of, uh, out of eight. If you're ever interested in great Kansas photography and exaggerations and you see any Hal Reed exaggerations, don't turn them down. There's only eight of them and they're the rarest of the rare. Next. Uh, in Mead, Kansas, there were three photographers in 1909, 1910, 11, 12. One of them was named Guru. He made a few exaggerations. This is one of them. 1911, Mead County, Mead, Kansas. This lady gunslinger with a smoke and a cigarette with a pistol says, automobiles are just too slow for me. This was made in Mead County, Kansas. He made about eight or 10 exaggerations. Next. Uh, this was made by a photographer by the name of Day in Mead, Kansas. And uh, it talks about, it shows two guys in an automobile shooting this jackrabbit. And uh, he says, the jackrabbits grow big in Kansas. Okay. Now there was a photographer, a famous photographer in Garden City of the name of Wolf. But then all of a sudden, Hal Ottaway shows me that there's a, a photographer by the name of Wolf out there that did six exaggerations with different initials. We never been able to find out who this guy was. This is the first exaggeration made where a man is uh, on, a, on a flying grasshopper. This is made out of Garden City, out of Finney, Can, uh, Finney County, Kansas. <laughs> around 1909 and 1910. Next. <clears throat> and then, of course, we come to uh, Frank Connard from, uh, from uh, Garden City. I think Dennis McBurney's on with us. Dennis is the one that created the uh, uh, the booklet about Martin Cards, which is just outstanding. He made it in 19, uh, 2000, 1995. Hal will tell you about this one, but uh, he's working on, I'm working with one on, on Connard. I just want to say that at the height of Martin Postcard Company, he was making 25,000 cards a day in 1909 and early 1910. According to the Ottawa paper, the most they ever made in one day was 30,000 postcards in one day, all made in Ottawa, Kansas, all shipped out of Ottawa, Kansas. And uh, it's estimated that between eight and 10 million exaggeration postcards were made in Ottawa and distributed across the country. The only major exaggerations that made it all across the country uh, that were real photos. And of course, we're not talking about the ones he did on the 101 branch, which became very famous of the Indians. And now Pop Connard, he made a, he made a, a lot of exaggerations. 
who was the only major producer of real photo postcards in the 1930s. He got he sent them out by the millions. He became very successful. This is one of the rarest of the rare, where the owner of the tower in Genoa, Colorado, is shooting a large grasshopper in front of the sign for the tower. There's very few of these in, no, and this is one of the rarest of the rare. Next. Uh, this is a huge grass, uh, Jack Rabbit attacking one of the workers at the tower. Uh, Connor made a trip out there. Uh, I think he hoped the tower guy was gonna buy these from him and sell them in his gift shop, but he didn't. There's one showing the tower that you can find but made by Connor, but Connor made about 35, uh, postcards of the tower, only about 10 exaggerations. He never got them distributed. Uh, of the exaggerations like this one, there's only four or five of them known. This is the rarest of the rare again. Now, when you come to Conard, uh, Hal Ottaway, of course, collects World War II cards. We think this is one of the best ever made. This is a World War II soldier flying a grasshopper, said by Bonds made by Connard uh, during World War II. Uh, Connard has several great ones when people are riding grasshoppers. This is one of two World War cards made. To me, it just is an amazing card uh, about patriotism, about buying bonds and using the exaggeration concept of a flying grasshopper. Next. Uh, this is the second one he made with the uh, World War II soldier. The Atlas uh, Axis Partners Beware. We're uh, hopping uh, and uh, by bonds made uh, by Conard in, uh, in Garden City. Next. And uh, of course, all of us very much like the uh, flying grasshoppers with ladies flying them over the airport at Garden City. There's about five different ones of these. They're very hard to find and they're very uh, attractive, the cards. Uh, and that's the uh, terminal of the Garden City Airport. They're over on the right side. And this was called Happy Landing. There's another one with the lady is flying off to a vacation. <clears throat> so, now in the tower at Genoa, Colorado, uh, there was a lady there named, an Indian lady named Ravenwing. Uh, this is her in the middle of this photograph with some students. She did about 500 or more drawings on the walls of the tower. She was a major partner with the owner of the tower and she was there for several years. We've never been able to find out any information about her. There are three Martin, three Connard postcards that show uh, Ravenwing. And this is one of them. And as far as we know, the three photographs by Connard showing the Indian lady who was the artist at the tower are the only ones of her that, uh, that do exist. So I think that's the last one, right? I think Hello? we have the, a picture of your book, Larger Than Life, that you well, did. Let's go back to Hal Ottaway. Hal, uh, if uh, Cynthia's on, you can introduce her. You can introduce Dennis McBurney uh, uh, and Phil McDaniel, who's all doing uh, the postcard work. And maybe, uh, maybe uh, is uh, is Joyce Tice on? Joyce Tice is on from Phil from Pennsylvania. She's done a book about Johnson in. Uh, She's done a book about Johnson in Wampum, Wisconsin, who is another major producer. And she's got all the Johnson exaggerations on her, on her website. Uh, she's a great uh, advocate for postcards and done a great job to make the images available to the public. So Hal, back to you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you can introduce those people. We'll be glad to ask, answer any questions. Great, thank you. Uh, this is the a picture of the uh, uh, Cynthia Rubin and Morgan's book, Larger Than Life. It's available either online or I think Morgan still has some copies. So you could email him. 
you could, uh, you know, order direct or get one signed or whatever. I had mine signed by Cynthia uh, when she was here to give a talk to our uh, show several years ago. But uh, she's a lovely lady, uh, lives in Florida now. Cynthia, I know that you're here, but uh, I don't know how to get your picture on. Maybe unmute yourself and say hello. Does that work? <laughs> or or the next picture, please. This one shows the uh, illustrated checklist that uh, Dennis McBurney so skillfully assembled, put together. It's just so quality. It's so crisp, uh, great images, everything. He did it for the Wichita Postcard Club. Uh, several of us contributed as far as uh, information, and Dennis put it together, and we've reprinted it several times. It's available from the club, $15 postpaid. Happy to send you a copy. We have those. Um, and uh, those are the, uh, the two publications that I have, Morgan. I did not know about this Johnson one, so that's most interesting and uh, I did meet Joyce earlier but I didn't know her last name what was it again Joyce Tice okay and if you look up Joyce Tice on the web or you look up Alfred Johnson she has a website where she shows all of the Johnson exaggerations wow and uh, he was a major uh, publisher of exaggerations out of Wampum Wisconsin uh, they most all of them were printed uh, but it's amazing work of art. He did more postcards, exaggerations about a uh, larger, many diff more, more different subjects for exaggerations than any other photographer. Wow, that's neat. Morgan, if you have a favorite exaggeration postcard, what is it? <laughs> like oh your man, that's, that's, like a, your that's a different, that's a, that's a, that's a major issue, but I'd have to say that, uh, Canning Peaches by Martin, or okay. the car uh, with the eggs and the potatoes uh, by Martin, or, uh, I, you know, they're just major works of art, and uh, uh, they're, they got to be my favorites. Sure, sure, I understand. It says, uh, where did you recently find the four Cornish cards? I think, uh, and they, then they say, or is that top secret? <laughs> Well, no, it's not top secret. Uh, uh, we found those uh, those four cabinet cards from 1902. One of them uh, I found several years ago with the corn on the, and uh, I uh, I didn't know whether somebody had made that or if it was real, but of course I bought it. Then uh, the one with uh, the one with the uh, the guys climbing the uh, uh, ears of corn. Yeah. Uh, we found that on the Worth Point website. It is sold on eBay several years ago. I don't know who bought it, but we made a copy of that one. Okay. The one with the uh, house, I found that uh, on eBay not too long ago. And the other one I, I found on eBay, uh, searching over the last 10 years. Uh, so that's where we. Uh, we found them and, and uh, until, until I found a couple more this year and I went to Worth Point and found that one, uh, that document. And then we went to the Arkansas, Arkansas City paper and then had the documented that we had four that were all there in the mail and breeze in uh, 1902. Very interesting. Another question, when you say a Martin card was never distributed, do you say that because none have been discovered or because the company had records saying that? Well, the company, we have never found one piece of stationery. We've never found one record. We've never found any evidence of the Martin Postcard Company whatsoever. Um, I've been collecting exaggerations for 30 years. And so based on how many I've seen in my, that I've purchased, how many are in some other collections, that's how I base my 
concept of rarity uh, uh, and whether he widely distributed them. Uh, uh, actually, eBay is probably a pretty good place to figure out how many cards were distributed, particularly for Martin and for Cornish and for, and for, uh, and it shows you how many of uh, Connard's cards actually were, were published because again, some of them are quite, uh, quite plentiful. And again, some of them, one or two exist. That's all. I understand. Uh, we have somebody that says, and I think you kind of uh, answered this maybe when we were there at the picnic picture with Martin, but it said, were the people in Martin's cards his employees? And can you see the same person in several? I think you agreed. In the picnic, all the people were his employees. But in the cards, Martin, again, being a prank, practical jokester, being a main figure in Ottawa Main Street, being a hunter, uh, a major hunter, uh, a major figure in town. He had a group of about 10 buddies who went on trips, who went fishing, who went hunting. And those are the ones that show up in his, I didn't even show any of his fishing exaggerations, but we have the names of those 10 people. And those 10 show up in many, many of the Martin postcards. They were all his friends and personal buddies in Ottawa, not his employees. Interesting. Uh, the personal life of Martin, where did dad come from? I think you mentioned that at the very beginning. Uh, he, uh, his family grew up in Illinois. Okay. And they, they came out to uh, Kansas, Osage City or something like that. And then at, eight, at uh, he moved to Ottawa. Uh, when he from was there, and then he stayed in Ottawa the rest of his life. Uh, yeah. We have all that biographical information, but uh, right. he was 21 years old when he came to Ottawa from, I think, Osage City or somebody in that area. And his family had moved two or three years there before from Illinois. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. I think that pretty well covers. Um, let's see, Morgan. Somebody said, how did you get so smart about postcards? <laughs> well, I met Hal Alloway. <laughs> I met the Wichita Postcard Club. Uh, started going to postcard shows. And, and of course, I got very interested in uh, Dad Martin. And I was never going to collect any cards but his. But then, of course, as you know, you start collecting more exaggerations and this and that and the other. And it expands. And uh, then I got interested in research and history, kind of an amateur historian. So I was always interested to find out. And of course, it's great that the uh, newspapers, I used to go to Topeka, Kansas and go through the microfilm uh, files of looking for things on, on Martin and uh, others. But now the most of those are online and you can go find. And of course, uh, the early newspapers, as you know, if you walked across the street and you had coffee with your neighbor, they put it in the newspaper. And there's an amazing amount of information about these early photographers that can be found in newspapers. They're advertising. Uh, it's an amazing uh, historical record uh, in the newspapers. Uh, uh, and I now have uh, research and I have a copy of every article that ever was in the Ottawa newspaper about Martin from 1898 to uh, when he died in 1940. And I can remember when you first uh, had a job or you were working for Senator Dole in, in Washington, the evenings a lot of times you'd have free and you'd go to the Library of Congress. And you want to tell about that briefly? Well, I went to the Library of Congress uh, to find out what cards Martin copyrighted. And I, could, they, I had access to the copyright files and I looked those all up and I got copies made of those. And uh, I shared those with Mr. McBurney and he listed those in his uh, document that he made. And Martin, unlike some photographers, he copyrighted almost all of his cards. And of course, what frustrates us is he, he copyrighted about five or six of them that we've never found. Uh, so it gives you 
something to look at. And Martin also went to Colorado to the Garden of the Gods. And uh, frustrating for us, he made 10 real photographs of the Garden of the Gods. Uh, he says that they were gonna be widely distributed. We only know of four of them. We never found six of them and he never distributed them and they're very rare from the, from the uh, Garden of the, uh, the Guards. He also made some in, from Wyoming when he went out to visit the Underwoods at their ranch, but they were never distributed. I wanted to just show here, I, don't, I should have made a picture of it ahead, but this is like a, a, a photograph that's in oval. It's one of these Garden of the Gods scenes that's on the back of a little easel. It's like a big campaign button. It's covered with celluloid and it would have been a souvenir that you would have bought at the Garden of the Gods. But it is a Martin picture and you can see his, the handwriting and so forth there on the, on the bottom. But it's just another uh, fun go with uh, sort of thing. I think, I think I saw a question on there from Patrick from Greensburg who is the, the ultimate Conard expert Patrick said something about what is my white male? I'm not whale. I'm not sure I understood that question. Morgan, what is your white whale? The yeah. one thing you'd like to find. Yeah, I said, what? what's the thing? What's the one thing that you wish you could just walk into a show and find? Like, what's that one thing that you've been searching for 30 years that you just wish you had? <laughs> well, there's a Martin copyrighted a card that said it showed uh, people on the banks of the Meredithine River rolling huge logs down into the Meredithine. Uh, we've never found one of those. He hasn't, he, he copied another one which said it was an exaggerated Easter card. We could imagine it was large uh, chickens and large eggs. We've never found that. And then of course, uh, I'd like to find the, the rarer Connard exaggerations that Patrick has and nobody else has. I'd like to find those. <laughs> Wonderful. And somebody said, have, have uh, any been reprinted in the modern age? And I, well, we saw the Bob Burns, but like you said, just a number of others have too, right? Well, there's a, Pirated. There, was a there was a motel back in Pennsylvania that reproduced a bunch of them advertised in the motel. Uh, there was, uh, I don't know, there's various ones, but uh, in the modern age, of course, uh, um, not, not very many uh, uh, anymore uh, that, uh, but uh, I don't know, I, I, I kind of quit buying the, the plagiarism ones, they were always pretty poor quality and Martin never got any credit for them. Right. Uh, so. Uh, understand, understand. Are there any other questions from uh, other people? Yes, yes, uh, Ken Wilson. Well, uh, I've always noticed that the captions on uh, Martin cards are always written in a beautiful script and can Morgan tell us if Martin wrote those or do we know who wrote them? That's a very interesting question. It is a beautiful script. There was a guy that worked for Martin for a while off and on by the name of Hardin. After Martin shut down, it looks like some of Martin's equipment got taken over by Hardin and Hardin made 125 real photo postcards of cities in Eastern uh, uh, Kansas, typical ones, the local churches, the local hospital, etc. And they all have that magic Martin writing on them. But we've never figured out who, who did that. In my opinion, it's Martin did not do it. I think it was somebody who worked for him. I hope sometime to go over the, uh, we have the list of everybody that worked for him from the Ottawa directory it would be great to find out who that was because that helps us uh, like with the San Louis Valley cards. It's all got that special Martin writing on them. Uh, so obviously uh, it was somebody there in Ottawa and uh, I don't think it was Martin by looking at that one handwriting he had. Uh, 
Uh, I don't think it, I'm not sure, I don't think it was this Harden that continued that handwriting for about five years because he left and went to England for a while taking photos for Underwood. So the answer is, we'd love to know the answer to that, but we don't. Hal, thank you very much for the opportunity to present a program for the members and guests of the Wichita Postcard Club about Kansas, King of Folk Art Exaggeration Photography, 1888 to 1940. The presentation today especially featured the original amazing creation, original folk art photography by William Dad Martin from 1908 to 1912 in my hometown of Ottawa, Kansas. Dad Martin was the undisputed master of the art. He created around 60 exaggerations and produced around 8 million real photographic postcards in Ottawa, Kansas during those four years. These 8 million cards were widely distributed in the United States and Canada. So to summarize, the first photographic exaggerations we have found from Kansas were made in Blue Mound, Kansas and Winfield, Kansas in the late 1880s. Additional exaggerated uh, photographs were made then in our Kansas City, Liberal, Garden City, Salina, Hutchison, Mead, Burr Oak, and later in Norton, Dodge City, Scott City, and then the famous ones with grasshoppers and uh, jackrabbits by Frank Pop Conard in the 1930s in Garden City. That run of exaggeration of photographers ended around 1940 when uh, Pop Conard uh, closed up his uh, real photograph operation. So Kansas was truly the king of this new style of folk art, folklore. It was the center of such photographic art and artists. Exaggeration of photography was originated and created in the United States, it was not done any place else in the world, mostly from rural America. The artworks belong in folk art museums around the United States and recognized for what they are. They are masterpieces of photographic art. They were unique, they were new, and they truly exhibited the times they, in which they were created. Major dealers and collectors of surrealism artwork in London, New York, Paris, other places collect these photographs. They call them early, early surrealism. They are very uh, uh, excited about this type of photography this early. A top dealer in surrealism in New York City and I had dinner in New York several years ago. I asked him for his definition of surrealism. He turned to me and said, Morgan, it's that magic place where fantasy and reality touch. Perfect for exaggeration photographs. That magic place where fantasy and reality touch. Thanks again to the Wichita Post Clark Club and to you, Hal. Thanks, Morgan. The Wichita Postcard Club really appreciates what you've done today and telling us about Dad Martin and the Martin Postcard Company. This has been tremendous and so happy that we're able to film it or to copy it, uh, your presentation, so that others will be able to enjoy it uh, afterwards. But thanks again and uh, appreciate everyone for being here today. Bye-bye.